Hey everyone, welcome to Whole Artist Mastery. I'm Marianne Mitchell and today I'm talking to you from my office in my farmhouse. Um, and this is where I do my Zooming with all the individual artists who work with me and have some really interesting conversations. And so that's what I'm going to do with you today is have an interesting conversation about the development of a painting. What I mean by that is so many of the artists that I'm working with, you know, they get stuck at a certain point and it's almost like they're going down a road and then all of a sudden their car gets stuck in the mud and they can't get out of the mud. And how do you do that? And so a lot of them have been surprised at how much I push on through, <laughs> push on through the mud. Um, because in paint, you can actually do that. Sometimes you can't do that in the car. And so I thought it would be interesting to show you the development of one painting and all the different phases, all the different iterations some people wished I'd stopped earlier. Some people wished I had, you know, done something different. But it really comes down to, you know, what was it that I was on the search for? And so a lot of people ask me, do you know what you're going to do when you begin? And the answer to that is always no. And if I do have a preconceived notion, it usually gets in the way of that reckless abandoned flow. So in this particular case, what I find interesting is that I, I had an inner feeling about what it was that I wanted to express in the painting, which um, somewhat guided my decisions along the way, but there was a lot of back and forth about um, wanting it to be finished, thinking it was, then realizing it wasn't. And before I tell you the whole story, let me show you what I'm talking about. I started this painting in August of 2019, which um, of course little did we know that uh, a few months from then everything was going to change in our lives. But I was in the middle of Vermont uh, working with a client and um, was surrounded by a green that I was unused to being around, having lived in Denver for seven years and having just moved back to the East Coast. And so I wanted to work with that green and see if it's a ch it was a challenge for me because it's a green that doesn't really come naturally to me and you'll see in the piece in a minute. And I wanted it to have, I wanted it to be like a concentrated um, central focus surrounded by um, mystery, surrounded by neutrals, gray, the, um, the in, in between space, um, and then have this be like a clearing in that unknown. So you'll see here that you'll see the central part here and this is this green, this um, yellow green and also kind of like a, like a emerald green. And by the time I was finished this particular session, which I call first pass, I had used a lot of thick paint, which you can see here, and had created this uh, outline of a box and you can see already that my my usual um, color of green is turquoise is already creeping in <laughs> to this this kind of emerald green color but it's really important to note that the these um, ridges of an edge are here because I had to work with that for the entire length of the painting development and so when I finished, I thought, okay, well, this is interesting, but there's really too much action going on in the background. So the next time I went back into it was some months later when I was teaching a workshop at the Scottsdale Artist School and brought this painting. I thought, oh, you know, I don't have any connection to this piece. I'll just go back into this piece and Reckless Abandon Part 2. So 
I did that to some degree, but at the same time I thought, well, well no, what would, might it be more interesting if instead of having this floating green shape in the middle that I created a horizon line around it. So I did that and decided I'd have the top be dark, darker and the bottom be lighter. And by the end of the week, I was um, frustrated that it, I'd worked really hard on developing the surfaces and, and the blending here, but it just really wasn't speaking to me. And that's the key, is that when something has yet to really connect to you, you gotta keep going. So I did, um, but I didn't go back into it until we were in the first few weeks of lockdown in the spring of 2020. And as everyone in this world has an awareness of, it was a major jolt and um, there was a sense of darkness that settled in to me as well as people across the, the globe. And so I went back into this covering the light with this dark color. And, but I wanted to have, still wanted to have this beacon of hope, but I decided to break with the, the square in the middle and brought in these other colors. And I, I was in love with this for a few days and then I started thinking, eh, you know, there's still this middle thing and the marks in the piece look mechanically driven. In other words, they, you know, they're of the tool as opposed to of my hand. And so I decided, all right, well, let me see where I can go with this. Let me break this middle band. So. I went back in and I broke the middle band and brought in a few other shapes and some other colors and brought back the central square and started um, much more intentionally migrating towards the green that is really a color that resonates with me internally much more. So I was in love with this for a few days and then one day went in and realized that the division of space in the middle was still very similar in that there's the width here, the width here, the width in all of these shapes all the way across, this is a little wider, are pretty much the same. And I felt like I wanted to change that. So I went on and got rid of all of that I think, you know, when I was at this stage, I just felt like this isn't it. And rather than try to work with making this work, I covered the whole thing up and said, well, you know, what is it that I really want from this piece? And I kept going back to my original idea of having this central focus of a beacon of light and color and hope surrounded by mist, surrounded by darkness. And particularly, you know, knee deep into the lockdown, it, we were all so looking for that beacon of hope in the midst of darkness. So I really wanted that to, to come forward again. So from here, I went to this because I felt like, okay, well, it's still not working because it's kind of floating. Let me bring some more structure. So here I am back to the middle band, except that they have created different size shapes around the beacon of hope in the middle. And all right, you know, I started, I was intrigued by this and kept going for a little while, except that I felt like they were too divisive uh, in their shapes. So I, and too much the same shape again and by this time I was really beginning to get frustrated that I couldn't break away from the sameness <clears throat> but I also couldn't break away from wanting this central focus so I'd really fallen into what I call compositional checkmate because I couldn't seem to get out of wanting this central focus and figuring out how to make it work compositionally and still have an emotional tie to it so from here, I started to bring back 
some of the shapes. So you'll notice that I went from very defined shapes to almost no defined shapes except for the center and then somewhere in between where the shapes are somewhat defined but still mysterious and I, I liked this for a while for a while until one day I said no this isn't it and I'm really unable to tell you why but I felt that it was not it so uh, I kept going and back to more defined shapes and um, I thought no no this is not it so I decided once and for all to ghost the whole thing with like a whitish gray color and by now we're in um, the later part of the lockdown and I was very um, very frustrated and sort of dejected that I just couldn't get this painting off the ground because I knew in my heart there was something really there but I couldn't work myself out of that checkmate so I let it hang on the wall for a while and then one day I had a lot of uh, working with a lot of individual a lot of individual artists on zoom and at the end of the day I was really tired of um, talking on Zoom and I saw this painting I said you know I just I'm just gonna go back into it and whatever happens happens and if I lose the whole thing I lose the whole thing but I have to keep pushing on through and in about five minutes this happened and this particular version had me stand back and say wow I broke the checkmate and this is interesting because I was able to keep the central focus and shift the horizon line so that it's not straight across but it, it's, divi it's dividing the piece and yet it's not divisive and that's really important. So from here I thought okay well this is interesting. It can't be finished it only took me five minutes to do this and as I kept looking at it I kept thinking you know I, I really want the background to be less active so that the central square is the, the biggest focus so I worked on how to go about doing that and I thought okay well I'll bring in some white on the left side and dark on the left side on the right side and still I felt like it was taking away from the central focus and so I started to blend that together blend the top together so that the black is more evident because I really like the black against the turquoise square more than the white and then I thought no maybe I need to have more of a, a contrast between the white and the dark and I thought, well, you know, the white is just too chalky looking. And so I decided to come in and glaze the white with the turquoise so that the white would tie into the turquoise square a little bit more. And in doing so, that happened. But then this felt too blue uh, over on this side. So in the final version, I came back in with the white over the blue and ghosted that, worked in the middle here, decided that the two sides needed to be slightly different in the articulation of the horizon line, brought some lighter color into the bottom to pick up the yellow in the square and um, brought some texture down to the bottom here to talk to the texture up here and one day I looked at this and said there it is there it is and that gave me the title which is there and that title I love the title because it works on so many different levels it's there I finally got there you know that feeling when you finally get there 
And the, the feeling of the painting, the um, intention of the painting is to offer a place that you want to go. You want to go there. You want to go into that halcyon blue anchor of hope. You want to go there. So um, I'm hoping that this gives you inspiration to keep on pushing, to go the distance, to ride the wave out on the high seas in a boat without anybody around, knowing that you're going to be okay. But how you're going to get there is a complete unknown. And to keep going, to see what happens, keep that balance between intention and intentional feeling and intentional decision making. The balance between the unconscious drive and the conscious decision making. Having those two work together will help you continue to push on through and go the distance. I hope this was helpful. I really enjoyed sharing this journey with you. It's a very um, personal piece for me. And um, if you enjoyed this, please like the video and subscribe to the Whole Artist Mastery YouTube channel. And then go to my website, Whole Artist Mastery, and um, look around, see if there are any programs that would be of interest to you. There are online classes that you can purchase. There are mentorship programs for those who are looking for something that's an individual experience to go deeper and to go the distance in your own practice. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.